All right, gang, welcome back. We're going to talk about section 1.5, and that's about analyzing graphs of functions. And we're going to break this into four videos. This one is going to be about the domain and zeros from a graph. We talked in the last video about how to figure out the domain um, if you're given the equation of a function. Figuring out the domain of a graph is even easier than that. Uh, but we're also going to talk about another way, another type of notation to talk about domain and range. We're going to talk more about the vertical line test. That's something that you, you learned about in Algebra 2 and something that I talked about just in, uh, in the last section as well. We're going to determine where, where do the graphs increase, decrease, or remain constant. And again, that's just graphical, not anything that you do have to do with an equation yet. And we're also going to uh, determine where relative maxima and minima occur. And lastly, learn about the definition of odd and even functions. So let's start with the domain. Okay, determine the the domain from a graph is simple. There's just one thing that you need to keep in mind. Okay, if a graph has endpoints, you need to pay attention to whether those endpoints are hollow or filled. Okay, a hollow endpoint means that it does not include the endpoint itself. That means it's not inclusive. That means when you are talking about the domain, you would use less than or greater than. If the endpoint is filled in, that is inclusive, meaning it does include that endpoint. And so then you would use less than or equals to and greater than or equal to. Now, the new, new notation that we're going to be using is brackets. Uh, we use soft brackets when we're talking about non-inclusive endpoints. We use hard brackets when we're talking about inclusive. And so you notice there the curved ones, I refer to those as soft brackets. The square ones, I refer to as hard brackets. All right, so let's, uh, let's put it in play. I have this weird-looking function right there. And admit it, it is weird. And what I want to do is come up with the domain. That is, what x values are being used in this particular function. And so when you do this, I want you to think about it coming in from the left, from negative infinity from the x direction, and moving to the right. Okay, so if you look at this particular graph, it's got an arrow, meaning it goes off forever in the negative infinity direction. And then it stops right there at 3. That particular empty, or, yeah, empty circle tells us that it's non-inclusive. And then it picks up again at 5, and it's going to end up going to infinity again because of that arrow. And so that's how we're going to piece together the domain of this particular function. When you have infinity, you always use a soft bracket on infinity. So for the first piece of it, we use a soft bracket on both ends, and we go from negative infinity to 3. And for the second part, since 5 is included, we use a hard bracket on the 5, and then it continues on to positive infinity. So that's how you do that with uh, this new type of notation with the hard and soft brackets. And again, if you're trying to get it off of a graph for the domain, always start on the left-hand side and move to the right. Yes, an infinite bound uh, is always a soft bracket. All right, so how would you do this one? Okay, again, starting from the left and moving to the right, we have, we're starting at negative 4, and we're going all the way until 6. Both endpoints 
are filled, which means it's inclusive, which means we'd use a hard bracket. Let's try one more. All right. Again, starting from the left and moving to the right, the arrow tells us it's starting at negative infinity. There's no gaps anywhere. It goes to positive infinity. Infinity uses soft brackets. So that's how you do the domain. Now we're going to learn about the range. And right now we're just concerned about the range of the graph. We don't have to do it yet in terms of equation. The range is a set of all y values that are a result of the function. And the notation is done exactly like the uh, domain is. So I'm going to do another example here. We're going to do both the domain and the range. We'll start with the domain. And going left to right, you can see that you go from negative infinity to positive infinity. The range, if you start, if you're doing range, you start from negative infinity and go to positive infinity. And there's nothing until you hit negative 3. And then it goes all the way up, and those arrows are telling you that it goes to infinity. Now, because... 3 actually gets touched here. We're going to use a hard bracket on the 3, I'm sorry, the negative 3, and a soft on the infinity. One last little note. In section 1.3, we talked about x and y intercepts. And when we talk about the zeros of a function, we're only talking about the x intercepts. Okay? So if they ask you specifically for the intercepts, then they want both the x and the y. If they ask you just for the zeros of a function, then all they want is the x-intercepts. That's the end of this video.